Hey, good morning guys. Uh, welcome back to the Old Barn Homestead channel. My name is Gary and uh, it is Sunday morning here on a cold uh, but sunny winter day. And um, I've had a few requests. Uh, Cannon Builder, one of, the, one of the viewers, I think he's been joined uh, the channel maybe for the last year or so. And I think he missed a lot of the uh, original um, build of the shop and just kind of how things went together and so forth. And he just requested a video on the shop layout and how I decided to do certain things and so forth. So I thought I would uh, make a video on that for you here today. And uh, so we'll get in here and do a little shop organization and workflow video and uh, go from there. Okay, well, I'm going to start here at the beginning and just kind of explain the workflow and, and how I decided to lay things out like I did. Um, if you were not following along in the early days, um, you, you uh, may want to go back and watch some of those old videos on this channel, actually, um, and see that at different points in time, I've had things in different areas. And <clears throat> one of the things that I've tried to do is, uh, for most things where I can, have them on casters or on wheel so that I can easily rearrange, reconfigure, lay things out differently. But um, real quick, what you're looking at here is the roll-up door and the walk-through door that I just came through uh, here. And um, so things are kind of built around that. The thought was that, you know, when you get material in for a project, one of the first things that you're going to do is cut it. So the first, the thought is, is that everything over right here when you come in the door is the cutting area so you see my ellis bandsaw there um with the in feed and out feed and then right next to it here is the wood uh chop saw we'll go and take a closer look in a second so you can kind of see that and as we get on around you see the vertical bandsaw and you see right in the middle of the, the table saw so it's wood and metal you know cutting so the thought is you know you're going to bring something in you're going to cut it and Kind of the same thing over here when you come in this way you see the cnc plasma table is right there now i want to rearrange things i'm going to be doing that soon you guys will i'll bring you along for that but i'm going to swing back around and talk to you a little bit about uh, a little bit more so as we keep spinning on around here um you can see that uh, i've got this first mill and my thought was this would kind of be the woodworking area and this mill would be primarily used for wood you know mainly for like a drill press type thing but I almost never drill any holes in wood um, and primarily use it for metal as a second op machine or a dedicated op machine um, drilling tapping you know that kind of thing so um, the other thought process and what uh, what led me to how things are and I'm just gonna walk you around and give you a different perspective now um, and we'll keep panning on around the one of the one thing that that was a, a factor in how I decided to do things was the uh, was power. And um, so you can see my uh, 400 amp three phase, uh, I'm sorry, 200 amp. We have 200 amp coming to here and we've got another 200 amp way down here in the corner right there as you can see. And that 200 amp service feeds the living area and this 200 amp feeds the, uh, the shop. Um, but the one thing that you'll notice here is that every machine I have that is three phase and requires a number 10 or number eight or even a number six wire is along this back wall. There's a lot of power uh, on this back wall here running in, uh, you know, up, up right on that ledge there. You can't really see it. And then along the wall here, too. And you can see a power distribution box here that drops out and feeds welders grinders there's three plugs for welders there so the main thing that that informed one of the things that informed where i decided to put equipment was the power and to try to keep it on the same row and the same line and generally you know uh, fairly close to uh, power so you're not having to pull a whole bunch of copper everywhere um, especially the heavy gauge stuff and you know the further you get away from the from the breaker the more you know thicker the wire you have to pull to generate a given you know voltage or amperage to to that area so um the um so what what you see is so the thought is i'm going to pan you back this way again so we're in the cutting area over here so you're kind of processing around and then you get into the fabrication area over this way um and yeah i do have 
two machines in the fabrication area. And I'll show you and talk a little bit more about that. I, there's a couple, there's really one thing that I don't like how it's laid out and that's that's where my grinder uh, is, my uh, Beaumont Metalworks uh, knife making grinder. Being right beside the lathe is, it's just not a good spot for it. But anyway, so I'm gonna move on around here. So the thought is that this whole alley down through here is kind of the fabrication area. And um, you know, so the, the table on the left, and we'll take a closer look in a minute, is got a one and a quarter inch top on it. And it's an old uh, road plate that was made into a table that I bought off Craigslist. And um, so that's kind of my rough, you know, fabrication area, beating, grinding, bending, uh, banging on stuff, you know, coaxing, coaxing things into place, heating stuff up with a torch you know, uh, is on that because that plate is not square and it's not straight and it's not flat, but it is really heavy, really heavy duty and, you know, works well for that kind of thing. And then in the middle, you have the fixture, you know, sort of flat tables that I do, you know, fit up and final welding on mostly TIG welding. I really try not to MIG weld on those, um, and keep those decks as flat as possible so that they're a good reference point. So when I do need something finally, you know, fixtured down and, and, you know, welded into place. I've not, you know, got BB splattered all over it. That's going to uh, keep it uh, from, you know, sitting flat on the table. Uh, so I mostly do TIG welding and I've TIG weld a whole bunch of stuff because, um, you know, that's just kind of how, um, I mean, I like to do it, but it, it also just keeps the table from getting all the BBs. When I do have to MIG weld, um, I do uh, bring my welder out you can see the Miller welder there. And I've also got another welder that I've loaned out to my son, but um, I'll bring that welder out over here. And right up here is a 220 cord that I have dropped down from the ceiling to get access to that. Um, the other thought is to have all the machines around the perimeter and have other you know, work areas and storage and things like that in the center so that you don't have a lot of cords you know, hanging down from the ceiling or you know, running along the floor or, you know, issues with that. So I've tried to keep, you see, you know, in the center aisle here is a work table and, um, and the storage cabinets there. So, um, the other thing I, I really wanted to do, you can see the hose reel right here is a green 110, 20 or 50 foot hose reel. And then on down here is another one. And then from the ceiling right here, uh, there's a 110 drop down as well as a 220 drop down that I just mentioned. So, um, and then let me pan back around this way. I also have another one here that's 50 foot that um, I can pull over, you know, I can pull it outside if I'm doing something. I can pull it over to this area and so forth. So one thing I didn't mention was as far as like, you know, tooling and storage um, is back over this way are my mechanics tools and, um, so I think I'll just go handheld now and just show you a little bit of what's in these. And some of you guys have probably seen them before, but, um, and I've slowly started to move a few things from this area over and, and I'll show you that in a second over to this area, because I was making way too many trips over here to get things and back and forth and having to put them back. But, um, you know, just in general, I've got, I mean, I've tried to keep things organized fairly well. So screwdrivers, uh, Phillips and flathead and nut drivers kind of somewhat separated Now this is one that I need to get some of these a few of these moved over so all kinds of pliers and um, you know channel locks and cutters and different things and Same thing down here, you know, just regular wrench sets socket sets and um, the uh, the one thing that you want to really try to do is the, the one of the keys to keeping an organized shop is to every play everything has a home and if you get if you end up with stuff that doesn't have a home then that's when you end up with clutter like everything you see up there so why this stuff doesn't have a home i don't know i just haven't i've just been lazy and i really want to get it a home and get all that cleared off um but so you can kind of see you know some of the stuff that's in that um again the thought with the mechanics tools over here is when I need to work on a car, truck, whatever, which is fairly rare, you know, you pull it in, you got access to your mechanics tools right there. But I've slowly moved my fabrication related tools that were in those boxes over here. Um, and I'll just show you in a couple of these. I've, I think I've showed some of these, but 
all my grinders and you know pretty much my main air tools that I use for fabrication are here. I do have another drawer that's got impact uh, wrenches and other imp other air tools that I rarely use that are uh, stored over there. Um, same thing here too. You know I use a lot of these two inch Scotch Brite real lock disc. You know various um, little things for for the metal art. You know some sandpaper stuff and sign. I mean uh, assembly stuff there with the VHB B tape. Um, and I also have the chop saw here that I, I, the thought was is that I wouldn't really do much metal cutting, but this was already kind of affixed to this table. And the thought was is that, you know, if I need to trim something up or do a final cut on something or a quick cut, that I might use this. But honestly, I never use it. It's just sitting there unplugged. I've got uh, in the box over there two um, saws that are that uh, evolution sent me that are uh, nice saws that I've, I've not even used yet so um anyway so you know again the workflow just kind of working working again the, the cutting area you know more of the machining prep area welding here and then any rough you know bending torching banging banging beating you know whatever i'm you know is is over here and mig welding i primarily do here um and the uh, the mill why this ended up way down here I, I really I don't I'm not sure why I put it so far away it's about uh, I'd say 30 40 feet maybe from the power source it's the furthest uh, thing from the main power and um, oh and just right here you know uh, some of you may uh, remember a few videos back that I I now sell the plans for these grinder racks that Eco Mouse Design came up with and uh, I've sold a few of those, not too many. The video on that, you know, hasn't really done that well. But, um, you know, all the grinders, sander, this is getting a little bit on the cluttered side, but, you know, not terribly bad, are, are here. Um, and again, you know, the power cord that I can quickly drag over here. I also have one there that I mentioned that, that I can drop down. And there's one there as well. So let me talk about air real quick. Um, I've got, I use the rapid air system and um, let's see if I can find it. Um, you can't even really see now where where it comes through the uh, the spray foam, but you can see right here where it, where it comes out of it in that corner. Let me zoom in. And um, I have three quarter inch uh, line there and it's, it's actually uh, teed off right there and one comes to this half inch 50 foot hose reel we've got a uh, uh even though we've got dry air we've got a filter there heading into it one of the toilet paper style filters and if you have a machine with a dryer on it air compressor you you'll never have to change those filters i've checked them many many times and they're always clean always dry um and you see the air comes out down and and over here feeds um the uh, plasma table and then also feeds there's another hose reel a 3 8 hose up there uh the thought was you know need to pump up the tires need to do something outside you got a hose reel right there uh for that and then i also have another hose reel right here so the fabrication area is kind of bookend by by two hose reels that you can pull to the middle so anyway that's about it the mill uh the cabinets right here these are all uh, you know, drills and taps and everything for, um, for the mill, you know, and I've, you see a lot of empty drawers just because I don't have, I don't have the sizes yet. I'm just slowly collecting them as I go along, but, um, you know, have end mills in this drawer and I don't even know, um, counter sinks and, and starting drills and stuff in there. And here's parallels and V blocks mics and things like that so um more drill bits in there and this cabinet over here has uh some of the larger stuff some lathe tooling collets uh and so forth and the shop press you know just ended up getting stuck there in the corner i don't use it that much i actually did use it this week to bend up some quarter inch uh stainless um and then the sheet metal break i normally keep this up against the wall but i just used it a couple days ago um, so I pulled it out, but usually I keep it up. I use it maybe once a month. It's a life saver and handy when you need it. But again, I don't really need it that much. And, um, 
when I when I keep it up against the wall, there's good access to the door to get in and out. When I have it pulled out like this, obviously you can see it's pretty tight to get through there. But I, I never rarely go out that door. I mean, I go out there to turn the air compressor on and off, but I never really need any any equipment. So uh, spinning on around, you know, uh, some equipment storage here, both here and here, flat bar, square tubing, angle iron, some round stock, you know, you see up there and some partial sheets and off cuts and this is kind of an area that wants to try to get messy on me that i kind of have to work at you know on a on a regular basis to keep it organized bolt bin um plumbing fittings you know all kinds of things uh back there that get stored and then kind of on around to the shipping area and it kind of got taken over a little bit by the paint stuff when i was painting in here but pretty soon when i get in the paint booth i'll be uh out there um, these cabinets, I've, I've showed these, one of these is going to get moved into the paint booth when I get, uh, open for business out there, but you know, here's all my paint guns and stuff down there and, uh, all the different, uh, candies and stuff that I use for, uh, for painting up here. So, and this one over here has got the same kind of thing in it. solvents cleaners reducers all that stuff down there and you know tape um whatever gun cleaning kits you know all kinds of stuff scotch bright you know just organizing those bins i got my um paint sticks stir sticks and filters and that so just same kind of stuff other miscellaneous cleaners and uh various things up there miscellaneous not organized all that well but Anyway, so uh, this was going to be kind of the shipping prepping area, and I do do some of that, but the, one of the problems I have is I made this table a little bit too tall for that. It really needs to be about waist high to get to big boxes, you know, to get to the top to put things in. This is the metal bender kind of pick list, pick part area that I keep all the pre-cut, prefabricated things, and when an order comes in, I just grab, you know, the right quantity of each, uh, put them in a box and get them out the door. So, um, that's about it guys. This has been kind of a long one. Hopefully this was helpful to uh, a lot of people that have, you know, joined the channel in the last year since the, the shop has been built. But if you're interested and you ever want to go back, I mean, if you go back to the beginning of this channel, you, you know, when the very first video was when I bought the property on this channel and everything from clearing the land out to dealing with permit issues, local political issues, uh, to all the way through getting the building built and a little at a time getting the machines in and getting them organized and so forth. And again, I, I wanted to point out that, you know, this, uh, this, these machines and those tables are on casters. I can take all this and push it out of the way and have all this open floor space in addition to what I already have. And there's been a couple of times where I've needed to do that. You can see how much, you know, kind of open floor space I have. Um, which is really nice. I mean, somebody mentioned this on a comment the other day. One of the ways to keep frustration down uh, when you're dealing with difficult things or whatever is keep your work area clean. And I try to keep it fairly clean. It, it kind of gets it gets out of control here and there on me. Um, but I try to keep it clean. And, um, you know, and if you find an area, I would say one other thing I've learned from people is if you if you find an area of your shop where it tends to, you know, get junked up and things get start to pile, let me show you one. Here's one right here and it it just you know it's not terrible but it's one of those deals where pretty soon you know you know all of a sudden i got a big collection of stuff so i need to deal with that pretty soon so when you see those things you know and the same thing with this one back here uh the shipping boxes has been one i've i've really struggled with i hate to throw boxes away because you never know when you're going to need a certain size to send out i have some standard sizes for things that i ship out on a regular basis you know new boxes there um but you know so i'll keep every box when i order something in or somebody sends me something i'll keep them and then you know i use them here and there i use some of the packing material but you know it's an area that wants to get stacked up on me same thing with the off cuts you know i've gotten to where i, I just get rid of those pretty quickly if, if it's not if it doesn't have a big wide open section of usable material on it i just i get rid of it i get it out of here and um you know it just it's just not you're stepping over dollars to get to dimes uh by keeping that stuff in the way so anyway guys hopefully this was helpful to you um anybody got any thoughts uh on 
how you would do something differently, you know, feel free to chime in and let me know. The one change that's coming up, you guys know I sold the plasma table. Um, I'm going to move this mill and the um, uh, uh, the planer um, joiner and the table saw. All those three are going to get moved, and I'm going to just temporarily move them over here. I'm going to do something with that table and and you know probably rearrange a few things. And then my new table will get unloaded and parked here. And let me back away. And that's going to give me uh, that's going to give me access to to use the gantry crane and unload from my trailer or my truck and come straight over and, and unload onto the uh, plasma table. And that's mostly for heavy plate, you know, which I do every once in a while. Um, and when I do it now, it's really a pain. You guys have seen some of the videos on it. And I also deal with this uh, main, uh, what is that, a 12 inch or 14 inch beam there that hangs way down and it kind of gets in the way with the, with the gantry crane. So I can keep all of it in one bay. Um, so that's a change that'll be coming up here and uh, soon. So, all right, guys, let me know what you guys think. Um, if you have any other thoughts on the, the flow and, and uh, if you would do it differently or whatever. I've Along the way, I had a lot of suggestions from people, but this has kind of settled in and worked well for me. Um, you know, there's a few things here and there that I, you know, wish were a little differently, but you know, so you can see the fabrication area starts here and sometimes I have to make trips all the way over here to cut something on the bandsaw. Um, you know, maybe I need to cut a, something I didn't cut right. You got to go back and cut it again or uh, get a tool out of that. But honestly, it's not bad. You know, I mean, it's a few steps away. It's not like super, super convenient. Um, you want to be productive, but you also don't want to be a robot standing in the same spot all the time. So, you know, it's good to get up and walk around, move around a little bit and, um, so, all right, guys, I'm going to let you go, and we will see you on the next one.